I'll take you along, just give me that. I don't want that witch clinging to me anymore. Hemp. Let's see if I'm not inviting disgrace upon myself. Subsequently, the three vehicles departed one after another. Xiaoyu drove, constantly glancing in the rearview mirror. In the back seats were Zhang Shen and Dr. Zhu. Wang Bo sat helplessly, holding his face in silence. Miao Ru Yu and Zhao Xiong rode in the last vehicle, heading back to the company headquarters. Jia Chu Ying was rolling a coin between his fingers, his face filled with interest as he watched the screen in front of him. The screen displayed the scene where the fallen beast was attacking the inventory team. His hand suddenly clenched the coin, exerting force to twist it. Somewhere on the street, a man emerged from a manhole. Quickly, give me your hand. It's been two years. It's been two years since I've seen the sky. Chen, don't stand there like an idiot. Wait a moment. They'll know soon. Hurry, we have to leave this place so that the people outside know what's happened here. As they walked a distance, a bus suddenly appeared, heading towards them. The two exclaimed in horror. So there are still their people on the ground. I told you, we shouldn't have run. This time, if we're caught, they'll definitely strengthen their measures. Useless, I'd rather die out here than go back there. The brown-haired figure swiftly turned and ran as a fishing hook shot out from the bus, piercing his leg with a thud. He fell to the ground in agony, screaming. From the bus emerged several individuals dressed in all-black attire, wearing animal masks. The one in the middle questioned, Fool, do you know what you're doing? Quickly bring those two back. Deep beneath the Earth's surface, where many people were gathered, each wore expressions of misery and resignation. Three masked individuals escorted the fleeing pair back. They rallied the crowd, admonishing. Today, these two fools had the audacity to act up while we were changing shifts and stepping out. They dared to trample on the hard-won peace we've achieved. Is it worth killing them? The surrounding people, incensed, hurled stones at the two, shouting, Despicable! They deserve to die, these selfish scoundrels! The black-haired one tearfully begged for forgiveness. Please, spare me, I won't dare to run again. Unyielding, the brown-haired individual gritted their teeth and retorted, Each of you speaks harsh words to your own kind, turning your acquaintances into beasts, yet you accuse me of selfishness. I've seen those who feared death, but never seen anyone as cowardly as you all. The crowd, once filled with anger, now shifted to embarrassment, unable to utter a word. The brown-haired individual rolled up their sleeve and continued, Put out your hands and see for yourselves. Here, everyone's arms have been punctured five times or more. Each one of you reluctantly plays the role of a beast under this sewer. Yet, when someone like me tries to escape, you label it as rebellion. Truly laughable, ha 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 ha. Fearful of the brown-haired individual revealing more, a bird-headed figure swiftly pressed a knife against their throat and shouted, Shut up! What right do you have to judge those who want to live? Ants only seek survival, nothing more. Unfazed, the brown-haired person replied, You masked individuals are even more despicable than those beasts. You're afraid of a little pain from bloodletting, yet you fear these monsters. You think you're so superior, but leading beasts makes you one too. Ha ha ha. The black-haired individual retorted in frustration. I don't want to be bled anymore. That's why I ran. If I get bled again, it'll be the end. Someone at the front spoke up, echoing the sentiments of the others. It'll soon be my turn to be bled. When will this end? How much longer do we have to stay under this sewer? The bird-headed leader angrily demanded. What's wrong with you guys? The monkey-headed figure at the back whispered. Captain, let's kill this one quickly. He's inciting too much. All right, I'll kill him now. Tonight we'll feast on meat. Just as the bird-headed one was about to make a move, a voice commanded, Stop! Someone recognized the familiar sound and exclaimed, It's the three venerable figures from the land of the great treasures. From within the sewer, a flock of purple birds flew out. The brown-haired individual glared at the bird-headed one and demanded, Hurry up! Kill me! I want to die! Ignoring the brown-haired one, the bird-headed one lifted their head and declared, It's too late now. You will live worse than death. The purple birds swiftly swooped down, forming a formation, and three women emerged. As soon as these three appeared, everyone prostrated themselves on the ground in reverence without anyone instructing them to do so. The bird-headed one clasped their hands and bowed towards the white-faced woman. Greetings, Bai Ji Nun. The woman addressed as Bai 
Ji Nun smiled down at the brown-haired individual. The captain has punished you all hard enough. Why did the disciples run away this time? The brown-haired one shouted angrily. Why ask this? Of course, we don't want to be pigs for you anymore. Rather than being confined and raised by you, it's better to give me a blade for relief. Bai Ji Nun revealed a solemn smile. Ha 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 ha. The ingratitude of the wolf hearted. The dog lunged. Indeed, they do not know gratitude. At the onset of the apocalypse, countless knave lambs were ensnared and transformed into immortal emissaries of evil, plunging the earth into desolation. But amidst that darkness, Har City, Tian Tang, welcomed the Savior. He is the great lord of the land, arranging for you to reside underground, shielding you from the destruction of demons, providing you with food and warmth, protecting and nurturing you, building this beautiful home for us. So I ask those sitting here, who else could accomplish all this? The brown-haired individual angrily cursed. You crazy fool. Others trembled, too scared to utter a word. Bai Ji Nun paused briefly before continuing. And yet, you still don't know how to be grateful. One who only knows how to receive, but not to give is more terrifying than any demon. I, under the title of the great lord of the land, will reform you. Upon hearing the words, reform you, the brown-haired one's face turned pale tears streaming down. Reform. Could it be? Quickly, they were tightly bound. Despite their reluctance, they shouted, You pigs, how dare you willingly become livestock for slaughter? I would rather die than be a part of you. Come, at most, eighteen years later, I will still be a righteous hero. Meanwhile, the black-haired one kneeled before Bai Ji Nun, voice trembling. The great lord of the land, I won't run anymore, please forgive me. Bai Ji Nun spoke. You are but a lost lamb led astray by that criminal. We will forgive you, just as the great lord of the land forgives. Relieved that he was spared from death, the black-haired one repeatedly bowed in gratitude. Thank you. Thank you. Venerable figures. Thank you. Great lord of the land. Bai Ji Nun ceased speaking and walked towards the brunette. The others whispered among themselves. It's starting. She's about to begin. Can we not watch the execution process? Come on, accept the purification I bestow upon you. I am willing to use my body to cleanse the filth from yours. Bai Ji Nun lifted her skirt, revealing sharp, pointed teeth all over. Her body split open and spread to her head, emitting an aura of death. It was then the brunette screamed in terror. Ah, don't come over here. Following that, the man's screams of agony echoed throughout the space as blood flowed profusely. The girl with a covered head seemed excited trembling non-stop. The blindfolded girl cracked a smile. Ha ha, it's really exhilarating. Bai Ji Nun declared. The purification is complete. The group trembled, gritting their teeth in acceptance. Everyone shivered at the scene they had just witnessed. The masked individuals stood in silence, observing. On the street above, a zombie aimlessly wandered, hearing the sound of an engine. It turned its head, only to be crushed by an off-road vehicle with a loud thump. Xiaoyu inside the vehicle shouted excitedly. Seeing Xiaoyu showing off like that, Zhang Shen couldn't help but ask, Wang Bo, should we be moving quietly through the city? What if we attract more zombies and end up with a horde? Bai Ji Nun ceased speaking and walked towards the group of people who were whispering among themselves. It's starting. She's about to begin. Is it possible not to watch the execution process? Come on, receive the purification I bestow. I am willing to use my body to cleanse the filth from all of you. Bai Ji Nun lifted her dress, revealing sharp teeth underneath, and her body split open, spreading over her head. The brown hair felt the presence of death and screamed in horror. Ah, don't come over here. Then, the scream of the person echoed throughout the space, with blood flowing profusely. The girl with the headscarf seemed very excited and couldn't stop trembling. The blindfolded girl smirked and laughed. Ha 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 ha. It really is exhilarating. Bai Ji Nun said, The purification is complete. The group trembled and gritted their teeth in acceptance, shivering at the scene they had just witnessed. The masked figures stood silently watching. Above the streets, a zombie was aimlessly walking. It heard the sound of an engine, turned its head, and with a thud was crushed by an off-road vehicle. Xiaoyu inside the vehicle shouted excitedly, seeing Xiaoyu showing off like that. Zhang Shen couldn't help but ask, Wang Bo, should we be moving quietly through the city? What if we attract more zombies 
and it turns into a horde. Captain Liu and Dazu heard it. Zhang Sheng, sitting on the motorcycle, couldn't help but burst into laughter. All right, everyone, stay close. In the building ahead, a person wearing a Pikachu mask silently observed the three passing vehicles. After a while, the three vehicles stopped in front of a base. This was the military electronics research room that Zhao Xiong was searching for. Wine Bo, the main door is locked. Do we need to ram it directly to break it? No need, you're more observant. Wang Bo replied. The missile array on the side of the vehicle fired a missile, booming loudly, and the door was about to explode. Wang Bo, is this firepower a bit too strong? Zhao Shan's rebuke came from the radio. Wang Bo, what are you doing? I said it's a covert infiltration, and you're causing such a big commotion. Wang Bo replied. There are many zombies in this city. Let's capture them all at once. Then it will be much easier for us to collect gold and silver. Zhao Xiong was furious and trembling. Do you think you have plenty of ammo? Do you think you're going to an amusement park? Captain Zhao, get in my car. Wang Bo had calculated in his mind. So, Xiao Yu and Mio Mio can kill zombies to gain experience. Mio Mio, Xiao Yu will stay behind to handle the zombies. Mio Ru Yu immediately responded. Wang Bo, your strategy is indeed hitting two birds with one stone. Everyone stepped out of the vehicles. Mio Ru Yu raised two guns and said, Everyone go ahead. Xiao Yu and I will stay behind to watch. With a few revs, Xiao Yu confidently started the chainsaw. Still prefer close range weapons, they're more familiar. Since the explosion caused by Wang Bo earlier, zombies have been gathering more and more. Zhao Xiang stepped into the vehicle. Wang Bo greeted him with a smile. I don't know what else to assure you. If anything happens to Xiao Yu and Officer Mao, I won't let you off. Wang Bo was unjustly accused. She doesn't know. Xiao Yu and her police team have grown stronger, so blame me for putting them in danger. The vehicle slowly advanced into the research institute. Xiao Yu and Mio Ru Yu stood outside as the zombies began to rush. Xiao Yu wielded the chainsaw forward, while Mio Ru Yu provided cover fire from behind. Seeing the three zombies in front of her, Xiao Yu shouted and swung the chainsaw, slashing a few times, dismembering the zombies into pieces. Ha ha ha! Too easy. Outside the main hall door, Wang Bo issued orders. Zhao Xiang, Da Zhu, let's go in together. Captain Liu, Zhang Sheng. Zhang Shen, you all stay outside. We'll retrieve the items and come down. The other three had no objections, only instructing. Move quickly. Return quickly. Dr. Zhu dissatisfiedly asked. Wang Bo, what do you mean by not arranging anything with me? Am I not supposed to go? Wang Bo nonchalantly replied, picking his nose. You volunteered yourself. I didn't count you in the team. Dr. Zhu angrily retorted. You're too contemptuous of others. Zhao Xin whispered. Hey, Dr. Zhu. Wang Bo is the captain of our squad. Let's just follow his lead. Dr. Zhu snapped. As a low-ranking inventory clerk like you, what right do you have to order me around? The words low-ranking inventory clerk were like daggers stabbing into Zhao Shen's heart. Hey, Dr. Zhu, you're out of line. We're all doing this for everyone's good. Why do you have to be like this? Stop making a scene. We're just carrying out our mission. Wang Bo, you two, don't make trouble, okay? Listen to her. It's already annoying enough to come here. Inside the corridor, a zombie kept murmuring incessantly. Number two link to reserve power source. In a swift motion, a military shovel was thrust straight into its head, wielded by Wang Bo, while Zhao Xiang shot the remaining one. He pulled out the shovel, sighing. Indeed, it's heartbreaking. Even after turning into zombies, they're still muttering about work. Da Zhu nodded. This time, they can rest in peace. Dr. Zhu interjected sarcastically. Ignorant fool using emotions to understand zombies again. They're just infected with the most important memories retained in the brain. Before that, it doesn't represent they still have emotions. I really don't understand how someone clueless like you could be valued by our leader. Wang Bo angrily exclaimed. I was just expressing admiration. What are you picking on me for? Da Zhu quickly pulled Wang Bo back, chuckling. Stay calm, Wang Bo. Then, the four approached a room. Dr. Zhu said, this door looks very sturdy, probably not easy to open. These iron doors are usually 80 centimeters thick, definitely not easy to open. 
Although it's not easy to open, I can try. Saying so, she went to the lock. To open this door, we need to break the code. Even though this place has lost power, I can still open it. First, connect the code lock to the power source, then use a computer to link the code lock. From words to actions, Dr. Zhu appeared very professional. Wang Bo stood aside and exclaimed, Great strength, Vajra Palm! With a loud bang, the sturdy door in Dr. Zhu's mouth shattered, and he casually wiped his hands, saying, All right, let's go inside. Dr. Zhu looked wide-eyed. How could someone do this? Outside the research institute, Miao Ruyu and Xiao Yu continued to kill. In front of them lay the bodies of numerous zombies. Miao Ruyu breathed heavily and said, Finally, it's clean. Sister Miao, we probably just killed over a thousand of them. I was fighting and counting. Maybe it's around over 800 for you, and I think I got over a thousand. I feel like my skills have improved again. Is this an upgrade? Now let's go find Wang Bo, so he could check on me. Yeah, Sister Miao, let's go. As the two were about to leave, suddenly the corpses of zombies behind them began to move. Miao Ru Yu heard the noise and turned to look back, while Xiaoyu exclaimed in astonishment, What's going on? How can they move when their heads are cut off? At this moment, laughter echoed from above mockingly, Because they all come alive for me. You don't seem quite ordinary. Could it be that you're like us? Zombies, yet you have the scent of delicious fresh blood. Truly tempting. Meanwhile, outside the research institute's hall, the armed individuals stood on high alert. Suddenly, footsteps approached. Zhao Shen detected the direction of the sound and shouted, Who goes there? Captain Liu, on the other side, heard the call and hurried over, asking, What's going on, little sister? Zhao Shen quickly lowered his voice. There's a suspicious figure, don't know if she's human or zombie. Zhang Sheng aimed towards the girl and shouted, Hey girl, if you're human, please drop the veil. Seeing the girl remain silent, Zhao Shen yelled, Drop the veil immediately. Don't come any closer, or I'll shoot. Still no reaction from the girl. Zhao Shen shouted again, Don't you understand? Drop the veil now, or I'll shoot. But as the girl was about to step forward, suddenly a bullet from afar pierced through her chest. Zhao Shen was stunned. What's going on? I haven't fired yet, Captain. Why did you shoot? In case she, Captain Liu, now promoted to Major, shouted urgently, She's not human. Have you ever seen someone shot in the heart and still standing? Zhang Sheng exclaimed, Don't hesitate anymore. Shoot. Hearing his brother's reminder, Zhao Shen regained his composure and aimed his gun at the girl, saying, Damn it, I almost fell for it. So all three continuously fired at the girl. After a barrage of shots, the girl's hand was severed, and she fell backward. Seeing that she no longer moved, they stopped. This time she can't move anymore. Thank you, Major Liu, they said. Major Liu, concerned, advised, Zhang Shen, don't hesitate like that. Sooner or later, something bad will happen. Zhang Shen explained, I'm afraid of killing an innocent person. Anyway, this has happened more than once. Seeing his sister upset, Zhang Sheng added, this situation is indeed tricky, but you must prioritize your safety first. Zhang Sheng thought, My sister needs to experience more to grow up. On the ground, the severed hand of the girl moved slightly. Major Liu said, I can teach her how to judge between human and zombie. Zhang Shen excitedly asked, Really? That's great. Please, Major Liu, teach us more. At that moment, Zhang Sheng felt something was not right behind him. Behind him, the girl lunged unexpectedly. Zhang Sheng reacted swiftly, spinning around and kicking the girl away. You're too slow for a sneak attack, no chance, he said. Zhang Sheng looked down, his voice trembling. Wait a second, what's this? Why is there another zombie? Look, the arm that was broken just now has stretched out again, and the broken arm has turned into another zombie. In other words, she can regenerate. Whatever she is, kill her. Keep shooting he ordered. Inside the central research room, hearing the gunfire outside, Wang Bo turned in astonishment. Zhao Qiang said, the situation doesn't sound good. Wang Bo, go outside and check. Wang Bo rushed out, saying, Da Zhu, come with me to check. The gunfire hasn't stopped. Could it be the zombie king? No, I'll go out and see. Frustrated, Zhao Qiang gritted his teeth. This girl is crazy. 
causing chaos. Dr. Zhu quickly followed Wang Bo, rushing through a room. Da Zhu inadvertently glanced inside and shouted, Wang Bo, there's someone in this room. With that, he broke through the glass door and charged in. The masked figure, caught off guard, was swiftly knocked down by Da Zhu. Da Zhu quickly drew his sidearm and pointed it, demanding, Speak up, who are you? Wang Bo rushed in, asking, Da Zhu, what's going on? The other person appeared frightened, raising their hands in surrender. Stay calm, I'm human. What are you doing here? Take off your mask, everyone look. I'm a genuine human, not a zombie. So why are you lurking here? You nearly shot my head off, they said. The redhead stood up and said, I spotted you the moment you entered the city. What are you searching for? If you found it, hurry and leave. This area is controlled by four extremely powerful zombies. Very dangerous. Extremely powerful zombies? Is that the zombie king? Dr. Zhu affirmed beside him. Absolutely correct. The zombie king. Indeed, they are unbelievably strong. Rightfully named king. Dr. Zhu's face seemed to express cannibalistic intent as he patted the redhead's shoulder. Where are they now? Lead me to them quickly. Sister, you're standing too close. At this point, Dr. Zhu's prodigious chest became noticeable to him. Wow, it's huge. This chest is the largest I've ever seen. Dr. Zhu, enraged, grabbed the collar of this person and shouted, What are you looking at, you lascivious person? I'm asking you. All right, no need to make things difficult for this little friend anymore. Little friend, are you talking about me? Okay, forget it, it's just a form of address. Little friend, are you a local resident here? Besides you, are there any other residents here? There are many other people here besides me, but they all live underground. Wang Bo found it perplexing. Why am people in this city live underground? He asked, can you show me around? Before the other person could respond, there was a loud explosion outside. They're using artillery. Seems like the enemy is not to be underestimated. Outside the building. Taking two grenade hits, there's probably nothing left but scraps. What? Another one. That's impossible. I don't believe it. The zombies, despite continuous damage, kept splitting apart. What we do now? They keep multiplying. The more aggressively we attack, the more she divides. Seeing Zhang Sheng charging forward, Zhang Shen hastily exclaimed, Zhang Sheng, don't provoke them. Zhang Sheng rushed forward, swinging his weapon, but it only made a thud, leaving the creature unharmed. Instead, Something grabbed onto Zhang Sheng's hand, then gradually spread across his body. What's happening? Why is it sticking like mud? I can't exert any force. Another appendage tightly clung to Zhang Sheng's body. What? I can't control my body. Zhang Sheng, resist as much as you can. I'm come to help you. Before Captain Liu could intervene, Zhang Sheng was already being controlled by the zombie, thrown backwards with a shockwave, both lying motionless with blood spurting from their mouths. Outside the Research Institute gate, Xiaoyu and Mia Ruyu struggled to kill the zombie corpses. Xiaoyu, are you okay? I'm dead tired. These zombies just won't die, have you noticed? That woman over there always stays on the other side, waving her fingers. Then the zombies actively attack us. It seems like she's releasing magic. She must be the key. Now I'm going to cut off her hand. Mia Ruyu exclaimed anxiously. Show you. Don't be reckless. The blindfolded girl smirked. Want to face me head on, huh? Let's see if you've got the guts. As her fingers moved, the zombies rushed forward, blocking her. Xiaoyu shouted. This is never ending. She tore apart several zombies in front of her with both hands. Mia Ruyu cheered on the side. Well done, Xiaoyu. Xiaoyu charged forward in front of the blindfolded girl, yelling loudly, Die. Just as Xiaoyu was about to approach the blindfolded girl, she chuckled mischievously and pointed downwards. Xiaoyu lost control of her body and knelt down on the ground. Indeed, you have the power to control humans. Ha 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 ha. Now you're my puppet. Xiaoyu grinned sarcastically. Did you forget there are two of us? As soon as the words fell silent, Mia Ruyu appeared and delivered a powerful kick straight to the head of the blindfolded girl, causing it to snap off her neck and tumble away. Having subdued the blindfolded girl, Xiaoyu regained control of her body. I didn't expect we could team up to kill a zombie king. Now the other zombies won't move either. Xiaoyu furiously kicked the corpse of the girl. 
What a show! What a waste of our time! Xiao Yu, let's go meet up with Wang Bo. Yes, Miao, let's go quickly. As the two left, small tendrils protruded from the neck of the blindfolded girl. Meanwhile, Zhao Xiong stood alone in front of a box, looking at an image that seemed to be what she was looking for. Wang Bo is annoying. He agreed to act together, but in the end, he left me to do it alone. Zhao Xiang then took out a control key. Oh, this one is still powered. A voice emanated from inside the device. This is the secure document storage room of the Military Research Institute. Inside the storage is a top secret document. Please insert the key within five minutes or the storage will self-destruct. Upon hearing this, Zhao Xiang quickly inserted the key and immediately a USB popped out from the device. Zhao Xiang frowned as she examined it. Just a regular USB, was it worth the effort to come here? Anyway, let's put it away for now. At this moment, Zhao Xiang felt someone nearby and quickly raised his gun, shouting, Who's there? The space was incredibly quiet. Zhao Xiang breathed out softly. Seems like I've been too tense. Let's go find Wang Bo's group. As Zhao Xiang turned around, Bai Ji Nun appeared behind her, smiling. Outside the Research Institute Hall, Zhang Shen gradually regained consciousness, having just been shouted at by him a moment ago. It hurts too much. Before her eyes, Zhang Sheng slowly approached Captain Liu, then aimed straight for his sharp nose. Zhang Shen rushed over in alarm, shouting, Don't do it, please. Don't, that's Captain Liu. Just as the sharp nose was about to strike, Da Ju appeared in front, holding it back with his bare hands. Wang Bo pulled Captain Liu away and ran to Zhang Shen, saying, Get him something to eat. I'll deal with this guy over here. Zhang Shen thrust with his remaining hand. You want another fight, huh? No chance. Da Zhu shouted and his palm gathered strength, using the great strength Vajra palm to strike fiercely at Zhang Shen's head. Zhang Shen, thrown off balance, stumbled backward. Wang Bo appeared behind, embracing him. Wretched, get out of Zhang Shen's body. He lifted him up and slammed him to the ground. Zhang Shen watched anxiously from behind, while Captain Liu gradually regained consciousness, unaware of what was happening. On Zhang Shen's side, the wooden panels surrounding him slowly withdrew. Wang Bo hurriedly asked, Zhang Shen, how are you? Seeing Zhang Shen rushing over, Wang Bo called out to her, quickly get the beans you just got for Zhang Shen to eat. The female zombie stood silently, her image transmitted through her eyes to the zombie king below ground. He half opened his eyes and murmured, a time traveler. He quickly shouted, hurry back, you're not his match. Dr. Zhu ran outside and exclaimed, indeed, there's a harvest here. The zombie king has never been detected before. Da Zhu quickly asked, where's that kid? Seeing the kid hiding in a corner, Da Zhu curiously asked, why are you hiding there? The kid just chuckled without replying. You guys step back. Let the ugly guy deal with me. Wang Bo approached the female zombie. Suddenly, something large flew out from the building. Wang Bo looked up in astonishment. There's a zombie king inside the building too. Bai Ji Nun sprouted two wings from her back and flew high above. Don't make any moves. Your allies are in our hands. Wang Bo in her hands is Captain Zhao's team. And what's this? Another one. Wang Bo looked up. Is that really Zhao Xiang? Why is Zhao Xiang appearing there? What is that woman? He shouted loudly, Are you all zombie kings? Release her, and I won't make things difficult for you. Messenger of the devil, you still haven't seen the current situation clearly. It was you who ambushed us first. I advise you to let her go. Otherwise, you will suffer a more tragic death. Ha ha ha. Are you trying to threaten me? Apart from her, where are the others? Zhang Shen looked outside the gate and shouted, Wang Bo quickly looked behind. Wang Bo turned around and saw Xiao Yu and Mio Mio. Ayo, so many people here. If I had known earlier, I would have come in early to play with you all. Dr. Zhu noticed another zombie king and couldn't help but exclaim, Oh my goodness, there are so many zombie kings. It would be great if we could capture them all for research. Da Zhu was speechless with this nerve-wracking woman. With such danger looming, and you're still thinking about research. Shameless. What have you done to them? Release them now. With a swoosh, the claws of the zombie king schoolgirl stretched out, 
pressing against Shoyu's neck, I advise you not to act rashly. Otherwise, the great lord of the land will know. You are messengers from the devil sect. The great lord of the land wishes to meet and talk with you. There's a big wind road to the west. Tomorrow night, the great lord of the land will meet you there. Dr. Zhu was excited inside, so she's also referring to the great lord of the land as a zombie king. This time, we can definitely gather more useful information for the leader. Wang Bo shouted, What's going on? I don't know who this great lord of the land is, and I don't care. If you want to save your companions, you have to leave. Sisters, let's go. Behind them, the zombie king school girl sprouted two wings, reaching out to grab Xiaoyu and Miao Ru Yu. Trying to escape, it's not happening. Wang Bo immediately rushed forward, his hand executing the great strength Vajra Palm. But just as he was about to strike the zombie king, he suddenly staggered and fell heavily to the ground. Wang Bo, help me. What's happening to you? I don't know either, but it feels like someone is controlling my body. The zombie king in purple warned the zombie king schoolgirl. Don't be reckless. He's very strong. I won't be able to control him for long. Let's go quickly. Hearing this, the zombie king schoolgirl immediately flew up with Xiaoyu and Miao Ru Yu. Wang Bo yelled, Despicable. You can't go. A surge of anger erupted within Wang Bo, breaking the control over him. His body enhancement skill activated, muscles bulging, and seeing the girl who had just played tricks on him. Wang Bo leaped forward, grabbing her neck tightly, gritting his teeth. You won't get away with this. Dr. Zhu exclaimed excitedly. Well done, Wang Bo. You caught her. With a loud crash, Wang Bo pressed the zombie king down forcefully, his hand unfolding into the great strength Vajra Palm raised high. Quickly take me to find them. Why should I listen to you? In that case, you die. As Wang Bo was about to make his move, the zombie king in purple suddenly burst into laughter. Three projectiles shot out from her body in three directions, rendering the zombie king in purple motionless. Wang Bo frowned and muttered, They've escaped. Da Zhu, concerned, approached Wang Bo and asked, Wang Bo, are you okay? Dr. Zhu criticized, Wang Bo, look at the mess you've made. You couldn't catch any of them. Your girl has been captured by them. Wang Bo shouted in frustration. Ah, show you, Mio Mio, it's true that I'm useless. I couldn't even protect my own girl. Dazu couldn't hold back anymore and turned to scold. If it weren't for respecting you as a woman, I would have scolded you long ago. What? Am I wrong? If you want to fight, let's go. Zhang Shen, from behind, suddenly grabbed Dr. Zhu's shoulder. She turned back and yelled, What even someone of lower status like you wants to cause trouble? With a thud, Zhang Shen's hand struck Dr. Zhu's face directly and forcefully. Dr. Zhu looked at Zhang Shen incredulously. You, you dare to hit me? Wang Bo, it's already distressing enough, and she's still speaking nonsense. If I don't hit her, then who will? Since when has my business become your concern? Dr. Zhu, in a fit of anger, kicked out, but Zhang Sheng raised his arm to block the kick. Hey, you don't need to help. I'll handle this solo with her. Let me impress her. Just the two of us should go. It's time we all acted like adults and avoided further trouble. Kid, go back. I'll report this to the higher-ups. Wait for it. Wang Bo, what should we do? I need to go to the meeting hall they mentioned. Wang Bo, I'm going with you. I can't let Commander Zhao get into trouble. No, you shouldn't go with me. The enemy this time is too strong. I want to act alone. What? Wang Bo, you're causing too much harm like this. Commander, I didn't mean that. I just feel that acting alone would be more effective. Initially, Da Zhu also wanted to go with Wang Bo, but upon hearing Wang Bo's words, he felt Wang Bo was right. I'm still too weak. Going now would only be a liability. I'd better not go. Commander Liu objected, saying, Then what's the point of us following here? We can't just stand by and do nothing. Zhang Sheng interjected, Commander, calm down. In the face of the powerful zombie king, what can we do? We should still trust Wang Bo's judgment. Wang Bo, even if you don't take them, you have to take me. I won't be a burden. No, I said I would act alone. After the departure of those three zombie kings, the red-haired guy finally showed his face. There's no need for arguments anymore. As for you, Wang Bo, you don't need to go to the meeting hall either. That's not where they usually reside. You're a local here. 
Maybe you understand them, not fully, but you know some things. Wan Bo and Da Zhu were stunned, taking turns to inquire. So, can you lead me to find them? Speak up if you know anything that can help us. I dare not hide it. I am one of their underlings, plain and simple, I am their henchman. Wang Bo was taken aback. He quickly reacted by grabbing the collar of the red-haired guy. Ah, so it's you who's been informing them. Quickly take me to find them. I can lead you guys to search for them, but you shouldn't just step into their territory. Not only will you fail to save anyone, but you'll also put yourself in danger. Da Zhu found the kid's words reasonable and advised, Wang Bo, calm down. Listen to what he said earlier. He's just exaggerating those witches. What happened here? The red-haired guy spoke. We must start from the time after the apocalypse began. After the apocalypse, most residents migrated, but quite a few stayed here. Within the city, there are safe havens established, along with zombie isolation barriers. All our people have been infected with the virus and turned into zombies. I can only live day by day temporarily. I traveled everywhere, until one day, I met Divine Father Xin Lin. He is the Divine Father of our folk religious group, the Flying Society. Little friend, would you like to become like me, serving the great lord of the land? Under his persuasion, I joined them, becoming a member of the Flying Society. At that time, our great lord of the land specialized in providing shelter and food for the disaster-stricken people, promoting the development of religious beliefs. The suffering souls in the apocalypse received the protection of the great lord of the land. At that time, I felt the great lord of the land was truly great, like a savior, leading the lost souls to salvation. At least before that happened, I believe so. One evening, Xiao Fang carried a tray of food down the hallway. The great lord of the land hasn't eaten for days. I hope the food made by Divine Father can help stimulate his appetite. Xiao Fang approached the door of the land deity's room, then heard the distressed voice of a woman. Then another woman's voice echoed out. The great lord of the land, you must persevere. Inside the room, a girl bitten on the neck muttered with an open mouth. It hurts. It hurts so much. I'm about to die. The land deity tried to suppress the thirst inside, trembling. I feel so little blood. I can't make a firm decision anymore. Bai Ji Nun, still human at that moment, cried out tearfully. No, great lord of the land, with the protection of the divine, you can surely resist. What divine power? I'd rather die now. Xiao Fang glanced through the door crack, fear etched on his face as he murmured. Great lord of the land, you must be in immense pain, starting to speak nonsense. If that's the case, please suck my blood. All right? Can I suck it? Of course, I willingly offer it to the great lord of the land. I won't drain you. I'll turn you into one like me. With that, the land deity bared his fangs and bit into Bai Jinun's neck. Great lord of the land, I can feel your soul merging with mine. Outside, Xiao Fang, wide-eyed, witnessed this horrifying scene dropping the tray of food from his hand involuntarily, exclaiming in a trembling voice. The land deity then turned his gaze towards the door. Who's out there? Who's outside? Xiao Fang sprinted away in panic. Why, why, is this the true face of the great lord of the land? He dashed frantically into a corner and accidentally bumped into someone. Aya, Xiao Fang, what are you doing? You were supposed to deliver food to the great lord of the land. Why did you run off? Xiao Fang quickly scrambled up and said, Go, let's go. Hey, why are you acting so strangely? The bewildered brown-haired person watched Xiao Fang run off, then suddenly heard footsteps behind. Is that the great lord of the land? The land deity, in a frenzy, saw the brown-haired person ahead and lunged to bite their neck, a scream piercing the air. Xiao Fang, trembling with fear, hid in a corner. After a while, the land deity slowly walked away. Xiao Fang breathed a sigh of relief and collapsed to the ground, feeling fortunate that the land deity didn't notice anyone else and turned to leave. The next day, the brown-haired body was laid in the church. Xiao Fang sobbed. If I hadn't run away out of fear, then Xiao Han wouldn't have. Xin Lin spoke up. Xiao Fang, if you already know the true nature of the great lord of the land, then I don't need to hide it from you anymore. Xiao Han's death was just an accident only because the great lord of the land temporarily lost his sanity, causing such consequences. Divine Father, didn't you always know the truth? Since you and Xiao Han came later, we and Bai Ji Nun had already figured it out. 
In fact, we wanted to tell you earlier, but we couldn't find the right opportunity. Xiao Fang, don't be afraid. The great lord of the land came to save us, so he fell victim to the curse of the demon. We must believe in him. It's all for the best arrangement. Now Xiao Han is probably reunited with her family in the flying heaven. Yes, she won't need to live a life of fear anymore. Xiao Fang's face turned bitter. Are they all crazy? Xiao Han was sucked dry and turned into a dried corpse. 